Now, the news from the Voice of America. Anger in Egypt at U.S. Plane that crashed flying too slowly? I'm Christopher Cruz reporting live from the VOA News Center in Washington. Egypt remains leaderless days after its president was ousted. Mohamed Morsi was removed from office by the military on Wednesday, which then installed a new temporary government. That new government has not yet named an interim prime minister. On Sunday, hundreds of thousands of people gathered in Cairo to support the military's decision. Reporter Sharon Bain was there. Thousands of people have gathered here in Tahrir Square today to celebrate what they are saying is their second revolution. They say the ouster of President Mohamed Morsi by the military is the will of the people, that this is what they wanted, that he was leading them down the wrong path. However, on the other side of town, the demonstrators that are pro Morsi, they're saying that they must be heard, that he was legitimately elected and he should be reinstated. The people here are saying that is not going to happen. Sharon Bain reports anger is growing at the apparent lack of support for the demonstrators by President Obama, who has said the United States does not support any particular Egyptian party or group. Intense fighting in the Syrian city of Homs appears to have further damaged a mosque built in the 13th century. Forces loyal to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad have been intensifying their attacks on rebel-held districts of Homs in recent days. Activists say the battle has left much of the city of Homs in ruins. Britain deported Islamic clergyman Abu Qatada to Jordan early Sunday. Jordan had convicted him and sentenced him in absentia on terrorism charges. Sunday, just hours after he arrived in the country, Jordanian military prosecutors charged him with conspiracy to carry out terror attacks. Workers have found data and voice recorders in the wreckage of an Asiana Airlines jet that crashed in San Francisco on Saturday and American investigators say the Korean jetliner was flying, in their words, significantly below its target speed as it approached the runway. National Transportation Safety Board Chair Deborah Hurstman spoke to reporters on Sunday. Prior to impact, there was a stick shaker that activated. This is both an aural and a physical cue to the crew that they are approaching a stall. It's called a stick shaker, but there's a yoke that the pilots are holding, and that yoke vibrates or shakes, and it is telling them that a, a stall is approaching. That activated four seconds prior to impact. The head of the airline says the cockpit crew had thousands of hours of experience. Two 16-year-old Chinese girls died in that crash. More than 180 people were injured, 19 of them still hospitalized, six of them in critical condition. Five people now confirmed dead after a train carrying crude oil derailed Saturday in eastern Quebec province in Canada. The derailment caused four of the trains, more than 70 cars, to explode in the middle of a small town. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper. What has happened is shocking and truly devastating. My thoughts and prayers, and those of all Canadians, are with the people of Lac Megantic as they deal with this disaster in their community. Tragically, uh, it is clear there has been loss of life, but we still do not know how extensive that is. I offer my heartfelt condolences to all of the families and friends of the victims. Forty people remain unaccounted for. Police say the number of dead will rise. Several bombs exploded in and near a Buddhist temple in eastern India Sunday. Two pilgrims were hurt. Police said eight bombs exploded. Two unexploded bombs were found and defused. No claim yet of responsibility for the attacks. 
a member of Russia's parliament who often speaks for the government, has encouraged alleged American spy Edward Snowden to accept Venezuela's offer of asylum. Alexei Pushkov heads parliament's International Affairs Committee. On Sunday, he posted a message on Twitter that says, Venezuela is waiting for an answer from Snowden. This, perhaps, is his last chance to receive political asylum. Saturday, Bolivia's president offered Mr. Snowden his, uh, offered him asylum. He became then the third leftist Latin American leader to do so, following the president of Venezuela and the president of Nicaragua. That's the news at this hour from The Voice of America. For more on these and other stories anytime from around the world, around the clock, go to voanews.com. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News, Washington.